Hey guys, my name is Mitsumio, and today we have finally learned all the details surrounding the two new operators coming to Rainbow Six Siege named Yana and Oryx. Yana has to be one of the most interesting and unique characters that Ubisoft has ever introduced into this game in quite some time. The way that her gadget works, it is called the Gemini Replicator. It essentially makes a hologram of herself. She can then use said hologram to scout out the map. Not only does her gadget look exactly like her when she's running around with it, but it's also going to make the same sounds that she would make. And so to my understanding, if she sprints down a hallway with this hologram, everyone on defense is going to hear someone sprinting down that hallway. Now you can take out her hologram basically instantaneously. Any damage that it takes or if it comes in contact with a mute jammer, it'll immediately get taken out. The thing is though, and the reason why I think her gadget is going to be incredibly powerful is is that it recharges. You can use this as many times as you want throughout a round as long as it's not on cooldown. And so the amount of ways that you're going to be able to apply this in a match is staggering. You only have two drones on offense, obviously, and they're some of the most viable tools that you have at your disposal. But your drones don't last very long. Someone, if they see it, is going to promptly take them out. And so what makes Yana so potentially powerful is that it doesn't matter if you took out her drones because she's gonna be able to continuously send in her hologram over and over and over again. Yes, it might have a cooldown, but if she uses it properly, she's gonna be able to relay an incredible amount of information to her team. On top of that though, and this is where things get really interesting, is that she's gonna be able to use her hologram to essentially give defense false information that she can take advantage of. If defense hears someone running down along a hallway, they're gonna automatically assume that it is a player trying to hit them from that angle. But if all of a sudden she flanks around from a different side because lo and behold that noise was being generated by her hologram she can catch that defender completely off guard now it is worth noting that when she is using her hologram she isn't able to take shots at other players and if it does get taken out it doesn't ping the location as if you were going against a alibi there is a key distinction between those two different characters but i cannot wait to see the uh, the insane amount of ways that people are going to be able to manipulate and use this to their advantage i have a feeling that young is going to be incredibly powerful in the right hands as long as you have the skill and the know-how to use her. Now, as for her loadout, she's gonna have access to the ARX and the G36C. I'm sure that some people are gonna be disappointed that we are once again getting reused weapons here, but I can also understand why Ubisoft is doing this. There's already incredible amount of content weapon-wise throughout all the operators in the game, and I also think that they're trying to promote weapons that don't get used very often. Hardly anyone plays Ash with the G36C, and that's also true for the ARX. RX. And so by having them on a brand new operator, maybe people will find them to be more viable and they'll start using them on these different characters. All in all though, I cannot wait to see Yana in action. I truly do believe based off of what we've seen so far that she is going to be one of the most interesting and uh, dynamic operators that they've introduced into the game in quite some time. Now as for the new defensive operator, we have Oryx. He, he is a very interesting new character. The way that his ability works is that he essentially charges forward. This gives him a boost of speed so that he can quickly move from point A to point B, making him very mobile around the map. But also, if he comes in conflict with a different operator, it will also knock them to the ground. This is going to be one of the best counters to Monty. I'm sure you guys have experienced this. Monty plants the objective. It's a 1v1 situation. He's well, just kind of standing there menacingly. Now, instead of just kind of giving up because Monty has a huge advantage in those situations, just charge at him, he gets knocked to the ground, and it's an easy free takedown at that point. On top of that though, his ability will also allow him to charge through barricades and soft walls. If you go through a barricade, there isn't any consequences. You don't take any damage, but if you go through a soft wall, not only will you be kind of stunned a little bit, you'll notice throughout the, the video today that there is a bit of a disorientation effect, but also you will take 10 damage. And so if you're lo running low on HP, maybe not the best idea to go through a, a soft wall at that point. The upside though, is that this gives him a lot of mobility to flank and catch offense by surprise. If you have a, a camera in the other room, you know that offense is there. Instead of having to use a, a impact nade or, or flank around on the normal routes, you would just simply go through the wall as Oryx. It does take a short duration to bring up your 
primary weapon and and I'm not really sure how quick it is in the video It seemed quite long and if it does take him a substantial amount of time to bring up his primary This probably isn't going to be all that useful I'll be completely honest if this is just like a Maru where it takes like two seconds to actually bring up your weapon in a game Where things are decided in a split second. That's probably gonna mean that he's gonna be one of the weaker operators Obviously only time will tell I don't want to jump to conclusions But that was one thing that definitely stuck out to me his final ability is that he has the ability to literally jump up and grab onto hatches a floor above. Unlike Amaru, where you have to use a gadget that makes a lot of noise, he is literally able just to jump up, scout out, he can even hang there for a short period of time, and then jump in and then get the flank off. He's gonna have a lot of ways of moving around the map. Now, he is going to be two armor. I was a bit surprised by that, considering that they're propping him up as a roamer, and most roamers usually want to be three speed to move around the map, but hopefully his abilities will be able to make up for that, that little bit of movements. On top of that, he's going to have access to the MP5, it's not going to be able to use an ACOG, and the SPAS-12. You'll also be able to use a secondary shoddy to be able to open up hatches, so if you want to be able to move from floor to floor, that will also be a possibility. In general, though, I'm not entirely sold on Oryx just yet. Don't get me wrong, he looks like a lot of fun. His ability just looks like a blast to use, but I'm not really sure how viable it's going to make him. Now that isn't the only thing that is coming with the start of this new season, because Oregon is also going to be getting a rework. You probably noticed throughout today's video that some pretty substantial changes have been made to the map. The reason why Oregon is getting a rework is that they've stated that it became pretty stale. The community has figured out how to play it and pretty Pretty much every round plays out the same every single time. And so the way that they've tried to remedy this is that they've expanded certain sections and also just added more key flanking routes. A really good example of this is on the white stairs. Normally there is only a staircase that leads up to the dormitory, but now there's going to be one down below into the basement. And so as long as I'm understanding this correctly, that means there's now going to be three different access routes for offense to make their way down. This also gives another flanking route for defenders to make their way up into the core part of the building so that they can try and hit them from a different angle. They've also expanded and moved the objectives. The tower is no longer a key point for defense. They've moved that into the meeting room and also into the kitchen. Overall, though, it looks like they've made some great improvements. We are going to have to wait and see, but it appears that they've kept the essence. This isn't a complete rework from the top down. This still looks and it's probably going to play a lot like the old Oregon, but I think they've made... Uh, some really key distinctions here where I'm crossing my fingers that it is going to make the map a lot more, a lot more varied and interesting every single time that you play. Legion and Twitch are also going to be getting a rework at the start of year five. Legion in particular is finally getting some nerves. What they're doing to him is that now his gadget isn't going to be seen through walls, so it's not going to be as great at information gathering. You're going to have a harder time identifying where your gadget was activated, but on top of that, it's now not going to do that initial damage when you step on one of his goos. Gone are the days where it's a 1v1 situation and you basically have to give up because there's like 5,000 goos between you and the objective room. You're still gonna have to take it out if you step on one of them because there will be that reoccurring damage, but it won't mean like an auto loss if you are low on HP. What I was not expecting though is that Twitch got a bit of an upgrade. The way that her gadget works now is that her drone shocks recharge. You only get three of them, so I guess technically Technically, it may not be a, a buff or it could be a nerf in some situations, but as long as you're using it conservatively, you can potentially have an infinite amount of shocks as long as her gadget doesn't get taken out. This is going to give her a lot more utility of taking care of these gadgets as long as you are conservative with it. Now, one change they know that many people are going to be ecstatic about because it's been something that the community has been wanting basically since the game came out is that they're finally making adjustments to the way that barricades open. I cannot tell you how frustrating it is to drone out someone, identify where they are, try to open up the barricade to promptly take them out, and then the barricade kind of glitches out on you, and the wood just gets stuck directly in your line of sight, and you have no idea where they went. And so hopefully, this is no longer going to be an issue. The example that they gave is that the barricade, when you
you do melee it, opens up dramatically larger than it did before, and it should be a, a lot more consistent than it was. The final change that they talked about is that your drone will finally spawn where you selected at the beginning of a round. This is going to be very helpful on maps like Bank. Bank, there really isn't a lot of great ways to get your drone from one side of the building all the way on over to the other. And so if you're trying to spawn in the back alley, for example, but you want to identify if someone is trying to spawn PQ, but your drone was on the complete opposite side of the map, good luck getting any of that information. And so now you're going to have uh, that agency to be able to get your drone exactly where you want at the beginning of a match. Now, this is something that defense could use to their advantage because if they start the round by looking through cameras and identify that they see five drones coming from the back alley, they're going to know exactly where you are. So this is going to be a bit of a double-edged sword, but it will hopefully just give uh, the tools and really the, the agency that offense has needed for a very long time. In general, though, I cannot wait for this update. The rework of Oregon, the quality of life improvements, but mainly the addition of Yana. I really, truly do believe that she is going to be one of the coolest additions into Siege, and I cannot wait to try it out. Let me know what you guys thought about all this information, though. Are you excited about the two new operators? Which one do you think is going to be the better out of the two? Are you looking forward to the rework Oregon? Let me know your guys' thoughts down below. Uh, but yeah, guys, until next time. Have a good one and take it easy.